Good afternoon. I'm Father David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we are going to be focusing on the narrow gate of justice. And we're going to be looking at this from our gospel reading and in light of our Old Testament reading for today. Now, in our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 7, verse 12 and 14, we read this, "...do to others whatever you would have them do to you." This is the law and the prophets, how narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Now, I think in this context, with this reference to the golden rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and our treatment of others, the narrow gate that leads to life in question is the gate of justice and fairness in the way we live. And, you know, let's face it, making judgments, especially judgments that affect other people, is not always easy. But, as Jesus is pointing out in scriptures, you know, if we can just stick to the golden rule of treating other people the way we would want to be treated, that's a really good place to start. And I recall in Mississippi there was this case of a nurse whose job it was to give prescribed medications to those who were incarcerated. And from what I gathered in the trial that she was in was that she was the only nurse on duty at any given time for this jail that had a lot of inmates in it. And from the trial itself, it kind of came out that there was a lot of illegal drugs being smuggled into this particular jail. People, inmates, were having overdoses to drugs. And so, unfortunately, under her watch, there was an inmate who died. And the family actually brought the nurse up on charges for failing to give this particular inmate medication because it turns out that the inmate had diabetes and apparently, the nurse's defense was that, you know, she wasn't sure that this was the problem versus that was the problem, but obviously this inmate, you know, was neglected. He passed away. And the, the really unfortunate thing here was that I can't imagine being the judge in this case because it was just unfortunate for each situation. And the way it turned out was the nurse, I think, got like 15 years imprisonment for not treating the inmate's diabetes over a period of time as she kind of thought maybe it was something else. I'm not really sure all the details. I do remember, though, that this was a very complicated case, and I would not want to have been a judge for that case because in that case, judgment would be so hard to come to. And, you know, this is what I really appreciated about the Old Testament reading today. So in the Old Testament reading, we see the demonstration of what fair judgment and fair ruling should look like and the life that it brings as we practice it. So let me just set the scene here in Genesis 13, 5 through 8. It says, Now Lot who was moving about with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, but the land could not support them while they stayed together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to stay together, and quarreling arose between Abram's herders and Lot's. So the problem here and the issue leading to the quarrels and the destruction was kind of like an issue of resources, right? While it was great that this huge family was able to travel together for so long, the resources were thin, and they were just not enough to go around for Abram's family and Lot's family. So Abram, being a just and fair leader, makes Lot an offer. And we see this offer in Genesis 13, 8 through 9, where it says this, So Abram said to Lot, Let's not have any quarreling between you and me, or between your herders and mine, for we are close relatives. Is it not the whole land before you? Let's part company. If you go to the left, 
I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. Now, that's about as fair as Abram could be, right? And it's interesting that this is with family, because oftentimes this is where we need to practice our fairness and our justice first. It's with those in our own family. And, you know, Abram didn't want any bad blood with Lot. This is his family member. So Abram was even allowing Lot kind of the opportunity to make the choice himself of which particular portion of land he wanted. He's like, you know, Lot, you know, look left, look right, whatever, whichever one you want, you take that, I'll go the other way. And what I love about this story of Abram kind of practicing this narrow gate of justice is we see what kind of life it leads to and the blessing that comes out of it. So in Genesis 13, verses 14 through 16, we read this, The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are, to the north and south, to the east and west, all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. I think it's interesting that... The Lord is demonstrating to Abraham the exact same fairness that he demonstrated to Lot. Basically, Lot said, you know, to or Abram said to Lot, look around, take whatever land you want. Now the Lord is saying to Abraham, look around, take whatever you want, and I'm going to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. So what can we learn from this? I think one of the things the Bible teaches us is that while the path way to justice and fairness may be difficult to choose in the moment because we tend to think of ourselves and what's good for us. It is one of the narrow pathways that leads us into God's blessing. And so what is the application that we draw from this? It's this, demonstrating justice and treating others the way we want to be treated may be the catalyst for an immeasurable blessing. Well, thank you for joining me today as we looked at the narrow gate of justice.